Oh, baby. It's a special one today on your source for fantasy hockey. The Thursday episode of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey podcast. Big time special returning guest and all of the NHL news covered for y'all that's affecting your team. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's tap in. Your Locked On Fantasy Hockey, your daily podcast on fantasy hockey. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for joining us for the Thursday episode of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. And thank you for making us your first listen every single day. Today's episode, big time returning guest, special friend of the show, Josh Wegman, fantasy guru of the score. He's here to cover all of the latest news that's affecting your fantasy squad. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get 150 bucks in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Josh, thank you so much for joining us, my friend. We got to keep it tight. And I know you're a busy guy, but there is a lot going on in the NHL. And, you know, first of all, how are you doing? How are things? Good to see you. Yeah, I'm great, guys. Uh, really appreciate you having me on. As always, brother, good to see you. And look, let's start with Carter Hart because not only is there a lot of speculation out there, we're not going to talk about the off-ice issues. He's taking an indefinite leave, and this is going to leave a hole in the Flyers' crease. And this is a Flyers team that last I checked, second in that Metro division, unsure how. Maybe let's talk a little bit about the hole he will leave and the opportunity for a young Swedish goalie in Samuel Erson. Yeah, I mean, Urson will uh, probably be the guy moving forward. I know they have Cal Peterson up too, and he's been around a while, but Peterson hasn't played well in the AHL this year, so I would expect Urson to get the lion's share of the workload, so he would be the guy to own in fantasy. Flyers just, have been pretty good defensively this year yeah, too. That was really going to be my question follow-up, not to cut you off. I'm fired up to have you on, so that's my bad. What have you seen from the Flyers? You mentioned the defensive, the defensive end. They are a pesky team to play against and maybe taking on embodying a little bit of their coach in that sense. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, Tortorella gets a lot of flack, especially you know being an analyst the previous few years before last season. Um, has some takes. You know, he's anti-Michigan. Uh, <laughs> not not the state, the move, the lacrosse yeah. move, just to yeah, be yeah. clear. Um but you know what? When it comes down to it, he's a great defensive coach. He's an excellent motivator. Um, his teams are always really stingy defensively, and that's usually a good environment for a fantasy goalie. Yeah, I've, I've let my uh, feelings towards John Tortorella, you know, very well known about how I feel about him. But he is a great coach, and he's doing great things for the Philadelphia Flyers. And I, I really like Zach, uh, Samuel Erson in this situation. Flip and I have talked at length about his value and what he's done so far for the uh, Philadelphia Flyers this season. You know, he's played as just as many games or uh, close to as many games as Carter Hart has 12, seven, three record a nine Oh five save percentage, a two forty four goals against average. And we were talking about this the other day. Cause I actually traded for Carter Hart uh, at the beginning of the season in our fantasy league. And I think this is a good time right now for mm. Erson to get the crease and really show his worth and value for both the Philadelphia flyers, but also other NHL teams. Cause he's only 24 years old. And we know there's a lot of, a uh, hot commodity out for good goaltenders and uh, Samuel Erson's doing so right now. I actually went to go pick him up in our competitive league, but guess who's got him secured right now? Big flip over there. So might have to send you a trade uh, later today. Cause I'm going to be absolutely depleted without uh, any goaltenders on the market right now. Well, like that segue there and I'll throw it right back to you and to Josh, you mentioning trades, Jake Gensel, Logan Couture, unsure if either guys actually get moved, Josh. I know both Steele and I have had our eyes on both Gensel and Logan Couture. Let's start with Gensel, Steele. What's your take there? What's your question for Josh? Because I know those Vancouver Canucks are sniffing. I just don't know if Kyle Dubas knows what he wants to do with that roster just yet. Yeah, it's a tough decision for Kyle Dubas because obviously he came in with big expectations for what this Penguins club could do. And obviously you've talked about it at length as well about the short window for a lot of these older players, especially Crosby, Malkin and Chris Letang about how much longer do they have to actually make a Stanley Cup run uh, and and these other pieces. And Jake Jake Gensel is one of those other pieces who's been elite over the last six years. He's pretty much been a point per game player 
besides the first two seasons in the NHL. And, and I could easily, you know, he took a little bit of a underpayment on his last contract. I believe he's only getting paid six million. He's on the last year. He becomes a UFA. Uh, mm-hmm. I could easily see him getting ten million dollars on his next contract. You know, whether it's from the Penguins or whether it's from a different team in the NHL. But I, you know, for Josh and both you flip, I want to know how how um how likely it will be if Jake Gensel is actually going to be moved at the deadline because I know the Vancouver Canucks have been inquiring about his availability and some other teams as well but what are the li- what's the likelihood that a player of Jake Gensel's stature and, and skill actually gets moved from a club that is what only four points out of a playoff spot right now yeah I would expect Kyle Dubas to take this right down to the wire and maybe if Pittsburgh can get a bit hot right before the deadline he'll keep them and give that team a chance. And there's still a chance you could re-sign him. So I don't think this is the type of player that will get moved like well ahead of the deadline. I think if it's going to happen, it's going to be right on deadline day when Dubas can sort of a couple minutes right before. (laughs) Yeah, probably. I mean, just take as much time as you can to really see where your team is going. And if you have a chance at the playoffs, I think he'll probably try and ride it through. Cause I think a guy like Sidney Crosby is sort of owed that if yeah. you're in the thick of the playoff race. So I, if I, if I were a betting man, I would bet that he remains a Pittsburgh penguin the rest of the year, but obviously anything could happen. And I mean, for, from a fantasy perspective, I think staying in Pittsburgh is probably the best for his fantasy yeah. value. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, he's a guy that's probably going to produce anywhere he plays, but that top line real estate with Crosby and that built in chemistry with Crosby is uh, would be tough to replicate anywhere else, even on like a high powered team like Vancouver. Can't deny that. And that's the main point I would look at with this team is I'm not going to put it past Sidney Crosby that he goes on a little bit of a heater, even more than what he's doing. I know it's like, he's already had an excellent season. This guy's in the conversation for the heart and it's a very legitimate one. So you mentioned not being able to count out the team, and it's basically because of 87 at this point. I think they only have like 13 or 14 skaters under contract headed into next season. I know Cap Friendly's your boy, Wegman, so I got to give a little shout out to Cap Friendly. Jeff Carter, a couple of those contracts coming off the books, they're going to have a little bit more money, but not much. Yeah. So Kyle Dubas, either way you slice it, is going to have to get creative here. Eric Carlson coming in, it's exciting. It's a big name. After the triple-digit point season he had, obviously we were excited, but that puts them right up there against the cap. We're going to be right up there against the clock if we don't get to a few more topics on today's episode, including Logan Couture and some trade value there. This is one of Steele's favorite players. And I got a question for Josh about the top four teams in the NHL and who he thinks is best suited to go on a run, or perhaps maybe there's someone else on Josh's radar. He'll be around for a little bit longer, big time bets at the end of the episode. But today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Much to the chagrin of Buffalo Bills fans, the playoffs rolls on. And if FanDuel is America's number one sportsbook, no better time to get in on the NFL playoff action. New customers right now get 150 bucks in bonus bets guaranteed. When you place a $5 wager, that's 150 bucks in bonus bets. Win or lose, the app is so easy to use and so many different ways to wager. Live same game parlays, find bets in the new Explore tab, make a parlay over the Parlay Hub, and a whole lot more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a touchdown. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Make sure you go to YouTube, check out Locked On Sports today. They've launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. It's been up for over a month and a half now. They're here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On plus the national shows covering every single league. So make sure you go over there and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24 seven streaming channel. And thank you so much for tuning in for today's episode with flip and I and special guest, Josh Wegman. Thank you so much again for uh, coming on here as many times as we've had you on, because we really do appreciate it getting the insight and being able to have this Mm -hmm. dialogue with the, you know, the three of us here, but I want to move forward with another trade potentially and someone that's on the block. Um, And it could be moved, I think could be moved because of what's going on in San Jose. Is Logan Couture rostered at 40% right now on Yahoo Sports. He's only been back. He did come back from injury. He's had he has played three games. And the three games he's played, look at that. The Sharks have won three in a row. Absolutely spectacular 
uh, from Logan Couture. He's got one assist, two shots, five blocks, and six hits. For me personally, I think he's a force <laughs> to be reckoned with. Uh, even at 34 <laughs> years old, he has a to- he has a lot of fantasy value. Um, but he needs to be playing on a winning team. And obviously, with the cap hit at eight million dollars for three more years, Yeesh. I do think he will be get. I do think he'll be traded uh, at the trade deadline because San Jose is still going through this rebuild. If he were traded, where would you like him to be uh, traded to? And again, what do you think his fantasy value is moving forward at 34 years old? Um, I think the best fit for him would be Boston. Yes. Just because they have those holes down the middle, uh, you know, Pavel Zaka and Geeky and Patra. It's not the the best crew there after uh, after Bergeron and Krejci left. So. <laughs> Uh, I think Boston would just be the perfect fit. Couture is that kind of savvy two-way player too, who I think would be a seamless fit. And mm, yeah. I know we're talking about Couture, but I think Elias Lindholm, you can make the same case that yeah. that's an ideal fit as well for him of in Boston. Course. So uh, Couture has got some terms. So I could, I hope for Couture's sake, he gets to go chase a cup because, you know, he's been yeah. such a great player in the league for such a long time and hasn't won one. So um, yeah, Boston would be by far, I think the top, uh, location i mean maybe winnipeg too they could use a second line center or even colorado they could also use a second line center but in boston you know he would he could possibly get that top line real estate with uh pasternak and maybe marchand or at least he'd play with one of the two i would imagine it's a very very interesting take steel i think like you got something to say go ahead brother yeah i was just gonna say i have boston bruins at the top of my list but i also have the washington capitals and nashville predators as two teams to maybe keep an eye on to potentially go after logan Couture. i know washington definitely needs some center depth i know he's a little Mm. bit older and washington's an older team right now but i think he can do uh bring great things to the uh, down the middle for the washington capitals and both the nashville predators Good Guelph, Ontario boy. Shout out G-Town. <laughs> Just got to also put it on the map that I feel Logan Couture is one of those players that, and it's a bit of an intangible, but given his knack to have those kinds of games where he's like a wrecking ball, he sometimes has three or four points, eight penalty minutes. He fills out the peripherals. Yeah, I can remember in a number of my leagues, you look up at the top and somehow one of the winners always has Logan Couture. So it doesn't surprise me that it's only winners and cup threats that are realistically good landing spots for him. And in my opinion, all of those that you mentioned, Josh, and, you know, other than Nashville and Washington in terms of like actual playoff threats, yeah. Colorado, Boston, those make a whole ton of sense for me. And his fantasy value has to go right up. He's one of those perfect ads down the stretch week to week. But speaking of cup threats, Mr. Josh Wegman, by the way, make sure you're checking out Josh's work on the score app over on Twitter, X Josh Wegman underscore. It's a weird one. Just make sure you're searching up Josh Wegman. You'll find him. <laughs> Question for you, my friend. The top four teams currently in the NHL, and you don't have to stick to just those four. This isn't that serious. Boston Bruins right now, New York Rangers, Colorado Avalanche are right there behind the Winnipeg Jets and the Vancouver Canucks. If you are a betting man, which I don't think you are as much as me and Steel, perhaps, which is fine. Which team do you think of those four, or maybe there's another that you're looking at, is best suited to go on a run, in your opinion? Okay, I'm going off the board. You said that's Thank all right. Um, yes. The Edmonton Oilers are my pick. Wow. They are just Here we go. scorching hot right now. They've won 14 in a row. They were also my preseason Stanley Cup pick, and I did make a futures bet on them to win the Cup. Yes, sir. So I am very happy that they clocked out of that early <laughs> season hole. Uh, mm-hmm. It was kind of only a matter of time. You know, they were uh, – PDO was super low. They couldn't buy a save. They couldn't score a goal. Uh, mm-hmm. But everything sort of evened out a bit, and now they're on just this red-hot streak. And – Part of the reason why I really liked Edmonton going into this year is because this is the final year of Ken Holland's contract as GM. And, you know, there's been some some rumors that maybe he'll either step aside and become like a senior advisor after this year or maybe just retire as a whole. There's been some talks of that. So I really think this is the deadline he could really go all in. I can see them totally replacing Cody Cece on that top pair. That's probably their biggest hole. And if they can yeah. maybe get a guy like Tanev, um mm. maybe add another add a little bit of forward depth too i think sure. they're they're the team to beat i think uh you know this could be the year for mcdavid dry and company what's your take on that steel 
Yeah, I think if we're going off the board, Edmonton Oilers have to be the team. But if we're staying on the board, I think the Vancouver Canucks could be a real dark horse to make a, a push this uh, playoff season, especially if Thatcher Demko continues playing the way that he is. He's been absolutely spectacular. But you know me, Flip. I'm mm. going with the New York Rangers in this one. I've been on them for the last mm. two seasons. Very disappointed last year when they lost the New Jersey Devils in that fashion. Uh, yep. I, I just think at this point, you know, Again, I talked about the, the backup goaltender situation. I love Jonathan Quick as the backup goaltender. You obviously have Igor Shesterk and Adam Fox and uh, Keandre Miller and Jacob Trouba on the blue line. Yep. They've got the bodies. They've got the grit, the physicality. I really hope come playoff time, Artemi Panarin doesn't fade like he has in the past in the postseason. The same goes for Mika Zibanejad. I need to see a little bit more out of him offensively scoring goals because uh, he has that touch. But I really like the New York Rangers. I love what they're doing this year, and I've been on them the last two seasons. I'm hoping that this is finally the year that they get all the way to the playoff, uh, the Stanley Cup Finals. Before I allow Josh to break down that <laughs> take and the one that I have, because I'm going to go off the board a little bit as well, and that's not because I love throwing shade at the Boston Bruins, which perennially I do, and it doesn't work out for me. So here we go once again. Some voodoo pack with the devil. The Bruins are in first once again. Anyway... I'm looking at this Dallas Stars team, uh, uh, Dallas Stars team as one is not going to be reckoned with in the playoffs. You do not want to go up against Jake Ottinger in this club. And I don't know what the prognosis is on Miro Heiskanen. Uh, Josh, maybe you know a little bit more than I do. He should be back but, before All-Star break. So there you go. The fact that Jake Ottinger and Miro Heiskanen have both been injured. They got their injuries out of the way early. A little extra rest on the bods, but more seriously. This forward lineup, in my opinion, is one of the most balanced and talented in the entire NHL. They get Miro Heiskanen back, one of my favorite blue liners in the game, along with Jake Ottinger. I'm drinking the Kool-Aid with this Dallas Stars team, and if you haven't paid attention, they're two points back of the Winnipeg Jets and closing, so that would be my pick. What's your take on those two things right there, Josh? I, I love both those picks as well. I think yeah. both those teams are both legit Stanley Cup contenders. Uh Going back to the Rangers, uh, I think Peter Laviolette's just a fantastic coach. And if you look yeah. at his resume, every team he coaches, he brings to a cup final within his first few years on the job. You know, he brought True. Philly to a cup. Uh, he won one with Carolina. He brought the mm -hmm. Predators to a cup final. So yeah. I think that could definitely be in the cards in New York. Um, and Dallas, yeah, like you said, I mean, that forward group is so balanced. Uh, they're having a really good season, even though Ottinger hasn't even played that well. So he's yeah, a guy true. that could definitely just turn it on at any time and carry his team through a series. Um, with Dallas, I do think they probably need one more like legit top four defenseman. Yeah. I think they would be a really fun uh, fit for Noah Hannafin. Ooh, Ooh. I'd so, like that. And like, you know, Dallas is a pretty good place to play. Uh, the money situation and tax situation is pretty good. So I True. could maybe see that. Good barbecue, a, I've heard as well. Yeah, the old <laughs> sign and trade. Uh, I could definitely see something like that happening with Dallas. Um, and you have, you know, uh, Harley and Hannafin and Haskinen for the carrying your decor for the next 10 years or so. Bang. Love it. Steel, this is why we have Josh on. Hot takes good background information and snack reviews <laughs> anyway like i said make sure you're checking josh out on the score app always bring in that fire josh huge shout out to you for joining us we are going to get to big time bets right after the break steel take us there brother taking there taking us there indeed this episode is brought to you by indeed when you're drafting your fantasy team, do you ever wish you could do the same thing with your business team? If you're building a roster to win a league, you need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Find top talent fast with Indeed's suite of powerful hiring tools like Indeed Instant Match, assessments, and virtual interviews. The thing I love most about Indeed is the Instant Match. Indeed does all the hard work for you. Sponsor a job and boom. Instant Match shows you candidates whose resumes on Indeed fit your job description immediately after you post. With in Instant Match, you can start hiring fast. Indeed knows when you're growing your own business, you have to make every dollar count. That's why with Indeed, you only pay for quality applications that match your must-have job requirements. Visit Indeed.com slash locked on to start hiring now. Just go to Indeed.com slash locked on, Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Cost per application pricing not available for everyone. Need to hire? You need Indeed.
And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Continue to hit the subscribe, the follow button, and leave a five-star review. We appreciate all that love and support you show us every single day, Monday through Friday. Seven o'clock in the morning is when you can find all of our episodes. Josh, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the podcast. We're going to have to have you on here more regularly because this was just a great conversation. Is Flip, do we have anything more to ask him? Do we want to uh, continue the conversation of top four teams or maybe one last question? I just got one thing to get off the chest. Since Josh and I used to spend a lot of times in the old war room yelling at the TV, we are Leafs fans after all. We are unbiased Leafs fans. We try to be. <laughs> try I to need be. your general take. We have a couple of extra minutes here before you got to run. Let's keep it short and tight. I watched an interview with Kevin Shevel Day off the other day, and he was talking about his Winnipeg Jets having to play a very specific type of game for them to be successful. They know their identity, and they have to play a disciplined type of hockey every single night, or else they won't win. And so right now, they're playing their brand of hockey, and they know their identity. I thought about this from a Toronto Maple Leafs perspective, Josh. I can't put my finger on what the identity of this team is. And we watch a lot of Toronto hockey and read into it, and you are working the beat professionally. What is this team's identity? And if you could put your finger on it, we all know the blue line is a problem. Can Sheldon Keefe turn this around? And what are you doing to turn this around if you're running this team? Uh, yeah, I mean, my hopes are pretty low for this season. I, <laughs> <laughs> I wrote a column recently that they shouldn't really be players in the rental market at the deadline. I just Agreed. don't think they have the team. And, you know, they've given up so many picks and yeah. stuff in the past. I think it's probably a good year to just ride the team you have and unless you're making an ad with a guy who signed longer term or you can get signed to an extension um yeah because they don't have much in identity i mean they're yeah. a high-powered yeah. offensive team but they've been just way too leaky defensively all mm -hmm. year um the goaltending there's some question marks there as well i mean yes, what sir. team doesn't have some goaltending question marks there's like five True. or six that don't but True. uh but yeah, the defense is a major issue, and I don't think they're just one piece away from getting it fixed. So I think that'll be something that'll need to be overhauled uh, in the offseason. So I don't really think this is the year, but uh, I still think you could definitely win a cup with this core if uh, the right pieces are added around them and the blue line gets fixed. Hey, at least we got the Bills, right, boys? <laughs> at oh. least we have the Bills. <laughs> hey, baseball season is about to start. <laughs> Guys, pitchers and catchers got to be reporting soon, Josh. Come on. Would be nice if the Jays uh, did something. Then. That's, <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's a whole other uh, can of worms. Let's keep it positive. Much love for joining us, my friend. We'll wrap up the show in a minute with Big Time Bets, but shout out to Josh. Make sure you're checking him out on Twitter. Thanks again for joining us, brother. We'll see you again soon. Yeah, thanks for having me on, guys. Really appreciate it. And we're back to finish off with, of course, Big Time Bets, where the money is made. Many games on for Thursday night. Mm. Flip. It's got a same game parlay. We're going to get to that very, very shortly, but I got three picks coming from separate games. So if you don't mind, I'll just rattle them off real quickly, or yes, I'll sir. try to rattle them off quickly as best as I can. First pick, Red Wings on the money line against the Philadelphia Flyers. The Red mm. Wings are at home uh, in the, you know, head to head. The Red Wings haven't matched up against the Flyers well in their last 10. They're four, six, and O, oh, but mm. in the last 10 regular season games this season, Red Wings are red hot. They're seven, two, and one. While the Flyers have lost three straight, and as as we were just talking about Samuel Erston, and I love the value that he has. I think this is still going to be a close game, but Alex Lyon yeah. has been red hot as he well. Has. So I'm going with the Red Wings on the money line at home against the Flyers. Mm. Second pick, Patrick Waugh is behind the bench of the New York Islanders. They're playing the Montreal Canadiens. You know he's going to want a big dub here. Yes. The Islanders still trying to figure it out. This is only what his second True. or third game behind. This the will bench. be third. This will be three. Third game behind the bench in their last 10 uh, between the, you know, head-to-head -head matchup. They are 4-4-2, four, four, and two, so very tight between these two teams. But the Canadians also on a three-game mm. slide in the yeah. wrong direction right I now. I love that pick, Steele. Nice so pick. I'm going Islanders on the money line for my second pick and my lock of the night. I swear mm. to God, if this doesn't hit, I'm going <laughs> to absolutely lose my mind. <laughs> Oilers puck line against the Chicago Blackhawks. They're on yeah, a 14-game well. win streak. Nine out of those 14 games, they've won by two or more goals. One of the ones, uh, one of the wins where they only won by one. It was an overtime, <laughs> was against Chicago Blackhawks, but uh -oh. they're feeling themselves. McDavid, Dreisaitl, Hyman, Nurse, mm. Nugent Hopkins, and more. And Skinner playing absolutely spectacular. So that's my lock of the night. Oilers puck line against the Blackhawks. 
hey, look, if you're going to get burned, why not get burned by the Edmonton Oilers going up against the yeah. Chicago Blackhawks? Because they'll tell you what, if you have the cojones to be laying some kind of what major dollars on the other side of that puck, good for you because I wouldn't be putting any money on the Chicago Blackhawks for the rest of the season. That wasn't more than two or three pesos because that's how bad that team is. I talked about that on yesterday's episode. That blue line is embarrassing. Seth Jones is there and they have the young kid. I forget who it is. Korchinski. One of them, they have a young draft I think they have Vlasic as well. Who's been Korch- all right. Yeah. Korchinski isn't too bad, but the forward group, that's oh. a bad AHL team. No disrespect to Nikki Felino, Jason Dickinson, and others. Those are all fourth line, third line players, and they're playing top line minutes anyway. Same game parlay, baby. We used to call it a flip, tri- flip, big flip, triple dip. I will spit <laughs> this out, but I got to be taking a look at this Anaheim Ky- Anaheim Ducks into the <laughs> Dallas Stars. I'm gonna figure it out, Steele. I was talking about that Dallas Stars team, and I'm being for real about it. And I looked up those odds just a minute ago. Right after the Edmonton Oilers at plus 900 and the Panthers at plus 950 is the Dallas Stars at plus 1,000. And guess what? They just got a 20 of my money for fun. That contradicts my preseason Oilers pick as well. But that's what happens when you're a degenerate gambler. So giddy up. Here we go. Same game parlay. Dallas on the puck line. I'm going all in on this one, Steel, because they have wins in eight of their last nine against the Anaheim Ducks. And let me put that with the under, under six and a half. Eight of the last nine. Between these two teams, under the number. Jake Ottinger is back. I know it's been a rough ride for him this year, but I think the rest, I know it was an injury, but it's still rest. He's back. I think this is the perfect little reset at the midpoint of the season. I think Jake Ottinger is going to go off. You've heard me talk about him. He's one of my favorite goalies, but I think he's going to start to back it up in a big, big way. Going with the under and RoboCop. Anytime point, he scored a stunner the other night against the Islanders. He's on fire right now. He's got six points in his last four games. Give me Jason Robertson. Anytime point, good Niagara ice dog. Shout out (laughs) South Niagara. That's the parlay steal. Puck line, Dallas, minus 120. Robocop, anytime point. And give me the under six and a half as well. I'm feeling that one big time. Always got to give a shout out to the good uh, Niagara Ice Dogs and Niagara Bang. Natives out there. They're getting it done. And Jason Robertson, I need him to get, keep going as well. He's on my keeper fantasy team. There so you I go. love what I'm seeing from Robertson right now. I love the same game parlay against these Ducks. I love the trend as well. Thank yep. you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Make sure you go to YouTube. Locked On Sports Day has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. It's been up for over a month and a half now. They're here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus the national shows covering every single league. So make sure you tune in. Go to subscribe to the Locked On, uh, Lock, uh, sports, Locked On Sports Today YouTube channel. The, we're uh, struggling first, today, Steel. We're okay. struggling to get – hey, I'm still a little bit sick. I'm trying to yeah. get these words out right we'll now. We'll let it go. The first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. Thank you so much for tuning in for today's episode with Flip and I and special guest Josh Wegman. Make sure you have a great day out there. Good luck with all your bets, and we shall see you back here again tomorrow. Peace.